Hello and welcome to Simon Tech Notes. My name is Christian and I'm part of the technical support team here. Today we will be going over XPanel Designer Tag Database. For starters, I'm going to open up XPanel Designer and look at my canvas here. And I'm going to navigate to the tag icon up here on the toolbar, Tag Database. Now to create a tag, you're going to press the new tag symbol right here. And you'll see these wide selection of choices to make. We can make a group tag, which will be used for organization because it can host other tags within it. I can make a digital tag for bit data, so zeros and one. I can make an analog tag, so it can be used for bit, and it can be used for byte, word. It can be used for double word, float data. And then all, lastly, I can use string data type for words or characters such as group, name, type, those would be examples of string data type. So for starters, I'm gonna create a group. I'm gonna call it group. And then you'll see I have a file folder over here. Do not click over here to make tags within the group because you're still in the demo directory. So if you click on group and then I add a new tag, I can choose digital and then I'm gonna name it digital. And now I have a digital tag within the group folder. Now, if I want to make a tag outside of the group folder, I can click in another directory, press new tag, analog, select analog, press OK. And now I have an analog tag without being inside the group folder. But say I want to put analog within the group folder and I don't want it to be here anymore. You don't want to copy, but you can cut. So it gets rid of the tag here, but it's not gone. Click on the group, uh, group folder, right click, paste and now it's been copied over successfully now i want to make one more tag and i'm going to name it string for the last data type so naming it string now i have all my data types properly put here now i want to go a little bit into detail about how to configure certain tags now if you want to make a virtual tag you can it's already by default selected there and it will be messing with the internal memory of the x panel itself but if you want the tag to communicate with some other I.O. device, say a PLC, for instance, you're going to pick real tag. And then from the I.O. devices section over here that you, you messed around with before, you're going to have that here. And it's going to be selected, not system memory. This is internal X panel memory. But you'll, the I.O. device that you developed will be right here to select from. And then the I.O. address you're going to input in this section right here. And then that is the difference between a real and a virtual tag. There's another option I want to go over here, saving last status when closing. So this will cause the data type to become retentive. This shuts off when you turn it into a real tag because then you're telling the device that it needs to retain that uh, value when the X panel shuts down, which should not be the case. So saving last status when closing is only applied to the virtual tag. Now, if we go into advanced tab, we'll see that we can cause the tag to either be a zero or a one at the beginning of the program. So a cold initialization of the initial value of zero or one for bit. Now, if we go into the analog properties, we'll see a lot more options. So for advanced, I can cause, just like the digital, I can cause it to have an initial value. So the different data types for analog though, we can have unassigned 16, so that would be unassigned word. As you see here, there's no negative. But if I choose it to be assigned, I can click int 16, and then I get my negative values. I can also have binary coded decimal, and then I can have float data as well. Now, I'm going to show a little example of scaling between a PLC and an HMI itself. So 0 to 10. Let's say the PLC has negative 10 to 10 as the data range for this specific tag. Now, this is a different type of scaling than this scaling right here. So, for example, the 0 will map to the negative 10. 10 will map to 10 like it should. Now, this is where it gets tricky. 5 will map to 0. 2.5 will map to negative 5. And 7.5 will map to positive 5. And then every other number between will map accordingly to those parameters. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing that type of scaling, don't worry. There's a different type of scaling when you talk to an I.O. device. You don't even have to do scaling if you don't want to. This is just there in case you do want to do it. By default, it's checked off. So 
say you want to cut a value by a tenth. So you're going to type in 0 0.1 because that's going to scale the number by a tenth. And then I want to put zero as my offset because if I don't put anything there, it won't save. And I don't want to, I don't want to use any offset. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And then now this analog tag is being cut by a tenth from whatever I.O. device it's reading. Or if it's reading its internal memory, it will be cutting the value by a tenth already itself. And that is a bit about all the tag database information I can give you today. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful one.